Who's excited to, to praise and glorify the king tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. So exciting to see the Cordero family. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. We want to welcome you, and we want to thank you as well. We want to thank you for joining us in, your, in our faith tonight. We thank you. Thank you for coming out, YouTube, Facebook land, and any other social platforms that you might be uh, watching in on this evening. Uh, you know what? Just real quickly, it's Thursday night. We got Bible studies here, 7 o'clock. Thank you for coming out. We have prayer here, Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Just a couple quick things. Say quick things. Praise God. Every Saturday morning, the first Saturday morning of every month, men of a higher standard gather here. We fellowship, we break bread, and we have our men's meeting. That's the first Saturday of every month, 9 a.m. There it is on the screen there. Look at those brothers, hungry and fed. Come on now. And the second Saturday of every month, we have our women of virtue. Come on, somebody. We will be getting back to that in January. Uh, women of virtue, praise the Lord. And we got a lot, a lot going on here. Women of virtue's Christmas luncheon. Old Ranch, yeah, where's the sisters at? Hallelujah. From my understanding, there's either 83 or 93 sisters that have signed up that are coming to this. Amen? Praise God. We're talking about souls. I get excited when I hear numbers like that because I know it's souls. Amen? So it's exciting. That's Saturday, December 7th. Destiny House. We have Diego Monroy. Come on now. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He will be being ordained in the service. He's gonna have, they're going to have food there at Destiny House. It's going to be a celebration. Amen. God has made a decision and called this little brother out right here in Jesus' name. And he's going forward. Amen. Please join a special Christmas celebration service. I'm excited. I, you know what? I called Fernando the other day. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I want to know, brother. I want to know. Sunday, December 24, 10 o'clock. It's a great time to invite family. It's, this is the time, family. This is the reason. Jesus the Christ. Amen? Yeah, we're in this season, but the reason is always Jesus. You know what? Take that opportunity in this time to love on that family member that you haven't had that opportunity to love on. And let's invite them. Let's believe God for them. Are we still believing God for souls here at Turning Point? Are we still believing God to save people's lives and to set them free? It's up to us to invite. Amen? Let's get back to that. Amen? Let's start inviting. Praise the Lord. Join us New Year's Eve service. Obviously, that's going to be uh, December 31st. And we will, we'll get some more information on that shortly. Coming soon. Amen? You know, uh, turn to your neighbor on your right and tell them that their life matters. Tell them, tell them, tell them their life matters. Let's turn to our neighbors on the left and tell them that their story isn't over yet. Your story isn't over yet. That's the vision of this house, family. That's the vision, and I know we're having fun, and that's great. But that's the vision of this house right here. Your life matters, and your story isn't over yet. And I believe that somebody tonight needs to know that, how important their life is. Your life is valuable. God loves you so much that he gave up his best for you and I. Not his second best, not his third choice, family. It's because he loves you that much because of the plans that he has set before you. Amen? Matthew 6.33 reads like this. Seek ye first, first, the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things 
will be added on to you. Man, that scripture right there is a foundational scripture for this brother right here. And I'm telling you, just as it was powerful 28 years ago, it's even more powerful now in my life. God wants us to put him first, family. That's it. When we put him first, that luggage that we carry becomes with wheels. It comes with wheels. Rather than that heavy load that we carry through an airport, don't know how we're going to carry it any longer, God is like the wheels on that luggage. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you, family. Merry Christmas. Let's open up in prayer. Father, I thank you. I bless you and I praise you. I glorify you and I exalt you, Father. And I thank you for this privilege and opportunity to come into your throne, your throne room, your house of God, and to worship you, Father, to lay my cares at the altar, Father, to bring my weight and any heaviness that I might be carrying this evening to your altar, Father, because your, your word says that you care for us, Lord. Lord, and I thank you for each and every family that's here and represented this evening, Lord, as they fought through traffic, as they fought through a day of work, Father God, they've made it to the house of God, Lord. And I just ask that you meet them right where they are in regards to their faith, Father. As they come tonight and lift their hands and lift their voice, Father, embrace them. Embrace those that need to be embraced. Speak to those that need to be spoken to. Love on those that need your love, Father. We thank you and we glorify you. We praise you, Lord. And we come tonight to exalt you with everything within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come to the altar, family. Let's do this. Hallelujah. Let's just go before his throne. Exalt his name. Worship him in your own language. Worship him in your heavenly language. Just begin to praise him. Someone give glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory a Dios. You are high and lifted up. Yes, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. You reign on high.
Aleluya Gózate, gózate Levanta las manos aunque no tengas fuerzas Adórale aunque no tengas fuerzas Higher than the mountain. Higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trials and the change. One.
nothing back. Don't hold anything against anyone that has done you wrong or hurt you. Don't hold nothing back. Give that forgiveness away. Give it to somebody. Don't hold back the love he has for you, the grace he has for you. 
receive that right now. God is doing something new in this season. Something brand new in your life. Right now. She's a green. Amen. She's a green. Hallelujah. Something new in your life, Mia. Right here, smiles, right here, little smiles. Something new in you. Amen. Something new in your life. Let God do it. Ted, as I, I was worshiping right here, the, the Lord said, you have, a, you have a song in you. You have, you have some music in you. I know you say you can't sing, but I think you can. I think if you sang unto the Lord, you're going to just feel the, the power of God. And he's just going to radically change you as you begin to worship him. You begin to worship him. I think you're that baritone we're looking for. That bass voice. Because I think we, have a, we need a bass back here. You know, we have a bass player. But we need that bass, you know. We need that bass. And I, I, I don't think, I, I know the Lord yes. spoke to me right now. You got a song in you, brother. Just ask the Lord, what, what song is it? And he's going to give you many songs. It's not just going to be one song. And it's going to blow your mind. It, <laughs> he's going to blow your mind. He is. Because you're going to begin to sing. And people are going to be blessed by your voice. I see that in you. Thank you, Lord. Your daughter, the third one. What's your name, Mama? This over here, the one right here. Awesome. Yeah, the Lord's going to do something brand new in you. You're going to be, uh, uh, both of you are going to be beautiful sisters, but you're going to be one that, you know, I want to take care of that baby like it was mine. And God's going to do something new in you in that, through his love, to love others. That's what God wants to do with us as we enter into this new season. And you're going to sing with confidence. <laughs> you received your confidence already. Here about the boom come up too. Hey Amen. It's not going to be a competition. You guys are going to be singing with each other. It's going to be one, one voice as you sing. One mind, one heart. And it's going to be a blessing to the church. And you're in the background. The first will be last, and the last will be first. Diego can testify. He was in the background. God brought him to the front. When you're faithful to God, he does that. He does that. He'll shine you up. He'll eliminate you. He'll put some ra uh, ra radiance in you. That's what you need, little one back there. A little radiance. There you go. You're beautiful. You got to smile. You got to be poochy faced to, you know. You got to smile. Smile like your daddy. Your daddy's always smiling. There you go. Just something new. <laughs> He's going to pop you open, Jesus. Like one of those little pops. That's how it's going to be for you. You're going to say, my God, the joy of the Lord. I can't even contain it. You're going to say, I'm going to be one of those hallelujah brothers. Oh, my God. I'm going to be yelling out hallelujah, glory. And it's going to blow their mind because they know who you are. But God's going to do something new. Amen. I can just sense his joy here. I can just... Since his gladness, he's glad. God is glad with us all. Every one of us. He's glad with you. He's glad with you. 
It's beautiful to let the Lord be glad on you and in you. It's a joy. It's a joy. You're a joyful kid. You like to have fun, right? You like to joke around. As long as it's in Christ, you're good. Even the sister gives you poochie faces. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she has a lot of joy in her, too. <laughs> you guys get to a certain age and you guys think you're cool. You don't have to be cool. Amen. <laughs> Just let God love on you, man. Let God love on you. If you've never been loved by God, just ask him. What did I just ask him? Love on me, Jesus. I need some love. And he will love on you. Right, Soda Pop? He opened up my daughter like that. Just with love. That's a love that can't even be contained. It's inside of every one of us. We just got to love on the love people. Even the people that we say, you know what, they don't need, deserve no love. Yes, they do. Everyone deserves love. Amen. It's up to us to give it. You're the instruments of righteousness, the instruments of love. Get to love each other. No matter what, love out each other. Turn, turn to your neighbor and say, I love you and Jesus. Turn to your neighbor. Say, I love you. You could tell her. Say, I love you. Have you guys ever said that? Have you guys ever said that to each other? You ever tell them you love them? Not on New Year's or nothing like that. Right now. Can you, can you tell your cousin, your sister, say, I love you. Can you tell your brother that, Mia? We should, we should be so open. We should be able to say that. I love you, Josie. I love you. You're my sister. You know what I mean? Reina, I love you. You're my sister. You guys are you're my little sisters, you know? That's the way I look at you. That's why I call you mijo or little brother, you know? Even at work, I tell the guys that, you know? Hey, little brother, you know? And they just look at you kind of funny, you know? But we're just older than them, so we can give them love. We should be able to give confidence to each other. We should be able to give confidence to one another, not put one another down, not laugh at each other. Be confident, right? Be confident and give that confidence in Jesus' name. You guys go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to read some scriptures on our, it's our time for our tithe and offering, guys. You know, when the Lord wants to do something new in you, I want to encourage you guys to allow the Lord to do something new. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people here uh, in this church that uh, is missing the blessings of God because God is requiring things of people and of his people. And sometimes God doesn't, ask you God commands you to he commands you because he's already asked you over and over you guys are parents and you know how to you know right you can ask your son to make up his bed to take out the trash and all of a sudden you guys you know what I'm not asking you no more now you got to do it just do it right now don't give me no excuse just go and do it I've done that many hundreds of times hundreds I'm not asking you no more just do it and that's what God will do. Sometimes God will just command you to be honorable, to love somebody, you know? And they're hard to love, you know? Amen? What are you goofies doing over there? Uh, <laughs> but that's what we're to do, amen? But I want to read this to you guys right here. It's, it's Psalms uh, 96, 6 through 9. Psalms 96, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Because God is coming and his judgment is coming. And we have to be ready. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of God's judgment because it's coming. He came already as a, as a love and as a prince of peace. And he's still here on the land right now. 
He's trying to get people to repent before it's too late. And he's trying to love you out of, out of your sin. And he wants you to be ready because there's a day coming that there's some of us that are going to stay behind. If we don't repent and we don't get right with God, you don't have a personal relationship with God, not your mom having a relationship, but you talking to God. I just want to talk to you, Lord. And you can talk like that. Whatever you could talk to him just like that. I want to talk to you. And you begin to talk to him. That's a relationship. It's nothing religion, religious. It's something free. You can drive in your car and begin to talk to God. When you're in the hallways of the school, you can talk to God. When you're by yourself, Father, I just want to talk to you. I want to say hi. I want to say I love you. I want to say thank you for my life. That my life has changed. It has changed. But here he says in verse 6, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. We should have a reverence. A reverence means a respect, an honor for God. And if we respect somebody and honor them, I'm talking about God, though. We're not going to want to sin. We're not going to want to miss it. We're not going to want to withhold anything that God is commanding us to do. He's commanding you to live a life before God, an honorable life, a beautiful life. And he's given you the beauty already. He's already given you the honor within you. All you got to learn how to do is live it and follow instruction. It's very easy, very easy to follow God. If you just follow instructions, be obedient. I said obedience is followed by the blessings of God upon your life. So today when you give, when you worship right here, bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. So when you come, every one of you, when you come here, you should have a, a worship with you. Some of you who don't have money or, you, you know, you find yourself in a tight spot tight spot, you know, it's not God's fault. Just we're not taking care of our business. We rather take care of other things than tithe and give unto the Lord. We're to tithe and we're to give to the Lord first. And when you do that, he's going to take care of your business. When you take care of your business, you know, there's a lot of people that have to work, that have to work uh, two jobs, three jobs. If they tithe and give, they wouldn't have to. You wouldn't have to do that if you just followed God's instructions. And I just want to encourage you who are out there on Facebook and YouTube, heed to the word of God, that God is speaking to us. And I know that we're going to pay, uh, spend a lot of money right now on Christmas I think Friday, uh, Friday, uh, the, what's it called? Something Black Friday nights? Black Friday. Over a billion dollars was spent in the United States. Imagine that. That's how much money people have for that, but not for God and his kingdom. We need to learn how to give us here. And you people who are there on Facebook and YouTube, I want to speak to you as I, as I worship God. You miss it. You miss it. You miss the mark. Because pastor has given you instruction year after year after year after year that if you were to give your life and show yourself uh, approved unto God to come to church and worship God, and not forsake the gathering of the brother, God would bless you. 
but you're not consistent. You can't even come to church on a Thursday or Sunday for one year to save your life, to save your life. How funny that is, huh? That we can't do that, but we want the salvation of God. We want the blessings of God, but we're not willing to do and live a sacrificial lives unto God. But we sure want him, want him to do everything he can for us. And he does sometimes, even beyond our uh, rebellion and be, our disobedience, he still takes care of us. But God wants you in the fullness of his glory. So I would encourage you out there on Facebook and YouTube, make this year the year of commitment. Your year of commitment. Not no one else, you. That you would learn to be committed to the things of God. No excuses, no reasons. Just I'm committed. Thursdays and Sundays, those are my days to worship God. And those other five days, you can live and worship God as, as you please unto the Lord. But those days are for God. And we got to know that. So I just want to encourage you guys that. And you will hear that need an envelope, raise your hands. These handsome married men will get you an envelope. If you give via phone, there's the phone number, 714 Four seven 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 three six. One more time. Seven one four four seven 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 three six. Amen. And then you can scan the QR code right there, and uh, you can give. You can give to the Lord out of a grateful heart, a thankful heart. I'm telling you guys that I, I learned to be a tither. I learned to give her, be a giver. Been doing it for 29 years. I don't lack in any good thing. I got more than enough in Jesus' name. So I want you guys to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. I'll take one of those.
got the mic? Where's the mic at? Where's that mic? Hallelujah. That Josie and Brother Hugo. All right, Brother Josie, praise be to God. Glory to God. I know she can pray. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for this opportunity, Father God, as we come together as one, Father God, to give you the glory and praise, Father God, that, Father God, that we are able to give unto your bosom, Father God, to worship you and honor you, Lord, in this day, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing in, in our lives, Father God, that, that we just love you, Father God, because you loved us first, Father God, and gave us all your love, Father God, and showing us mercy and kindness all the time, Father God. So, Father God, we just thank you that we're able to give, Father God. And thank you, Lord, Father God, that those that were not able, Father God, that that you would that you would find some that they will find some way, Father God, to give unto your bosom, Father God, and give unto you and your glory, Father God, and your tithe to you, Lord. We just thank you and praise you, Father, and give you all the glory in the name of your beloved Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and receive our, I mean, uh, release our children. Come on. Our youth. Come on. Come on, let's give them a good round of applause. Bless them. Amen. And all you people right here, all you people on the right, why don't you move over in the center? All you people on the left, all you move in the center, find a center seat, please. Alejandra, si se puede, si se puede sentar, we're going to go ahead and release our worship. Sit in the center, too. Sit in the center. Let's see who listens and obeys pastor. Amen, amen. Ah, yeah, yeah. Lo vamos a sentar aquí en el centro, hermana. Si no, está bien. Okay, gracias, hermana. Oh, you can sit in the front. Yeah, you can sit right there. Amen. Yeah, give a little room for her husband right there. Amen. Imagine when you guys are sitting in the front row. Come on now, amen. You got to receive that by, by faith. I didn't like sitting in the backs. Even when I was uh, first saved, I sat in the front for a first year. I sat in the front, in the front. Second year, I sat in the second row, and the farthest I go was right there, third. Too much distraction, and I was too hungry for God, and still too hungry for God. I love the Lord, man. I I truly love the Lord. I enjoy the life He's given me. Uh, what a blessing He is. He's a blessing. He is the blessing, amen? He's the blessing. You can have a baby. The baby's going to be a blessing. But God is the blessing. You know, because, yeah, when we see the baby, oh, how beautiful, oh, my God. And then when they're eight years old, oh, what a bride, oh, my God. And then when they're 15, 16, oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you guys are to go ahead and open up your Bibles, we're, we're not going to do the confession today. Is that okay? Thank you, guys. God is always doing something different in our lives. If you would just open up your heart and open up your mind, he's always doing it. If you're, if you're willing, he's willing. You know, people say, oh, si Dios quiere, you know, in Spanish. And there's another way of saying it, too. What is it there, Mia? What is it, Martha? Another way of saying, si Dios quiere. Primero Dios, yeah. They'll say things like that. God is willing. If you're willing. If you read the Bible with the man with the withered hand, you know, Lord, if you're, if you're willing. He says, oh, I'm, I'm willing. Just stretch your hand forth. You know, the blind man, right? <clears throat> what do you want from me? Uh, I want my sight. Do you believe I can do this? Yes, I'm, I'm willing to do it. That's what he's saying. I'm willing to do it if you could believe it. There's nothing too hard for the God to do. Nothing. God can do whatever he wants to do. He's the sovereign God, the most powerful being in the planet, on the universe. Who was I sharing with? I think it was with Brother Ryan. He, we were sharing, talking on the phone yesterday, and he just says, uh, Pastor, can you believe that 
before the universe was made, before my mom was born, that God knew my, my name. He knew your name. He knew all our names before, before he even said, let there be light. He knew all your name. He knew your plans. He knew where you were going to go. He knew where we were going to take you, everything. He knew that. What we got to learn how to do is go with the program. We like to fight God. And that's why we don't get to get everything that we want or go where we want to go. Amen. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your life. So if you go to First uh, Thessalonians, amen. Chapter 5. We talked about the day of the Lord that's coming. I'm just going to read it real quick just to bring us right in, if you guys don't mind. All right? Because then we're going to talk about the, the various exhortations that God talks about. The, uh, the encouragement. The building up. That's what God does. He's a God that builds up. The only reason he tears us down or allows us to be torn down is because he wants to build you up and he wants to do something new in our lives. If you just allow him to do it, we fight it. You know, when I want to do something new in your life, he, he says, you fight it with your mind. We talk ourselves out of the blessings of God before it even happens, before it just shows up. We talk ourselves out of the blessings of God. You know, I want to give you a nonprofit, you know, state status. Oh, no, not me. No, no, I don't have the money. It just can't happen for me. You know, I said, saying, thank you, Father. I believe that. I receive that right now. You, you don't know when it's going to happen. You just got to receive it. Uno no sabe cuando algo va a pasar que Dios que está diciendo, pero si uno pone su fe en Dios, va a pasar. It's going to come to pass. Say, come to Spanish in Spanish for me. Come to pass. There you go. Exactly like that. <laughs> it's going to come to pass. I'm not bragging or boasting. My life has come to pass. It's coming to pass. What God has done in my life. It's, it's, it's. It's it's a it's a blessing. I'm so I'm so grateful, so honored that God would choose me to serve Him, to honor Him. And the Lord's coming, Amen. and He's going to come, and He's going to He's going to judge this world, and that's why we have to take care of our hearts. We can't let our faith fail us. Can't. I trust God no matter what happens. Amen? You got to learn to do that. Here it is, verse 1. But concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves, for you yourselves, know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Not that he's a thief, but it, it's going to come to people that don't know. It's going to surprise them. But you guys know he's coming, right? You know he's coming, right? You know he's coming. Immortus, you know he's coming, right? God is coming. All you guys say, God is coming. God is coming. You know this. And you got to know that in your heart. The Lord comes as a thief in the night. Then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. She knows it's coming, but when that pain comes and it's time to go, oh, my God, like never before. That's why they say men can't take it. You know, men can't have no babies, you know. We get little stomachs, we get little colds, and we're dying, you know. Amen. You ladies have everything. and still cooking and answering the phone and doing laundry and all that stuff. I'm like, man, they're tough. They're some tough ladies. And they shall not escape, he says, and they shall not escape, verse 4. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, meaning that you don't know, you know what's coming. You're, it's not like you're ignorant. That you don't know what's coming. So that day, so this day should overtake you as a thief. 
It shouldn't take you like that. You know it's coming. Amen? You are all sons of light and the sons of the day. We're, we're not to walk in the darkness. We're not to act like the people of the darkness. We're not to act like the world. Right. We're to walk in the light. Because you are the light. Amen? You're the brightness of God. You're the radiance of God. If you allow God to just smile on you. That's why I say you got to smile. Got to learn to smile. And he says, right, we're not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Let us be self-controlled. You got to have self-control of your life, of your thoughts, of your emotions. That's when you get well. That's when you get uh, 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 better. When you learn how to control your thoughts. You can't control what goes in your thoughts, but you can control what stays in your thoughts or what you want it to stay. Amen. You guys say, hey, thoughts, you got to go. I was sharing with a young man just two days ago and just ministering to him in the office here. He walked in while I was here on a Tuesday and he just came in and we started, I started ministering to him. I said, you got to cast down every thought, every high imagination that comes against the knowledge of God. You got to bring it into the obedience of God. You do. Not me, not no one else. You do. You know, you got to take, hey, you know what? The thought, you got to go. That foolish thought, that stupid thought, that ignorant thought, thought of sin, of, of power, of selfishness, you got to go right now in Jesus' name. And I bring you into the obedience of Christ Jesus that lives within me. And you got to do that. That's what he's talking about. You got to live a sober life. You gotta, amen. You got to learn, learn how to live right. Cool. Amen. He says, therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober for those who sleep, sleep as at night and those who get drunk, drunk at night. But let us who are of the day of the day be sober, self-controlled, putting on the breastplate of faith, uh, of faith and of love. You got to put that on. You got to live it as the helmet in the hope of salvation. You got to expect things. That's what hope, the hope of salvation means. You got to have an expecting heart. What are you expecting? On a daily basis, what are you accepting, I mean, expecting from God? Just que sera, sera, I'm going to live whatever it is. No, you got to expect better things and great things for your life. Because that could be the day that the Lord changes your heart. It don't have to be on a Sunday, someone laying hands on you, someone prophesying you. You, you don't have to have like that. You can have a relationship with God that he said, today your life changes. Today I favor you. Today I heal you. Today I deliver you from your past. And we got to keep running, keep, stop running to our past, even in our thoughts and with our words. Because your words will destroy your future. And that's why we never get to reach that plateau that God has for us. I'm telling you, I'm not a rich man in, in money, material things. But I'm rich in the joy of the Lord. I'm rich in the wisdom of God, that, what God has given me. His wisdom, not my wisdom. Wisdom uh, of the earth is knowledge, is smartness, but you're not acting in it. But the wisdom of God is that the instruction that comes from this book, you're living in it. And you practice it. And you live it that time. That's wisdom that I'm doing what the Bible says to do. That's wisdom. Without obedience to the word of God, all you got is knowledge. That's all you got. All you got is intelligence. Que ganas. A lot of dudes in the joint that are intelligent people, right? That's what my brother Juan told me. All kinds of intelligent men in there. But they're in there because they didn't obey God. Because a lot of them were Christians and they just didn't want to follow God. They wanted to follow their way. And we have, we have relatives like that. We have fa family, friends, right? That they don't want to follow God. They, they follow for two, three weeks, six months, you know, and they think they're okay. No. 
It's all the way to the end. Those who endure to the end will be saved. Those are the ones that are going to see Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? Verse 9. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Amen? Amen. If we're alive or dead when he comes, that we should have that confidence that, you know what, we're going to be with Jesus. And then verse 11, he says, therefore, comfort each other and edify one another. Amen. Edify, build one another up. We're not to bag on each other. We're not to make fun of each other. I'm to build you up and you're to build me up. We're Christians. Our words should have life. They should have light. should have joy. They should have strength. Now, courage. You shouldn't be uh, so competitive that you don't want to give an a encouraging word to a brother. Because you want to feel yourself a little better. That's the world. You should be able to build somebody up and encourage. And, uh, uh, uh. Let me think. Hold on, hold on, I'm going to get it. Uh, uh, Where well, you want to give someone a, a compliment, thank you. You should want to be, you should want to give someone a compliment. When's the last time you gave someone a compliment? I tell, I tell, these are young men I'm working, they're only four weeks old that I worked at that company and, and I'm giving them encouragement. So man, you guys do good. You do real well, man. We just give them a pump, and they're like, thanks, ain't you? I'm not talking to them about God right now. I'm just encouraging them that they could see. The one I was talking to, they transferred him. He says, man, I got to leave now, you know? I, I, I thought he was my assignment. But there's the other two other ones there right there, you know? And we, we have to build these brothers up. I don't know them. I don't know their personal life. But that doesn't matter. I still have to build them up. I still have to encourage them. That they could sense and know and witness the goodness of God in our lives. Can I get an amen? amen. Your nieces, your nephews, they, they, they should see the goodness of God in your lives. No matter what they go through. I wrote some notes here. I'm going to touch on that. But here it is, exhortation. He says right here, he says, and we urge you, him, Timothy, Silas, our, uh, uh, we want to encourage you, brothers, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, amen, to instruct you and to warn you. That's what he's saying, and admonish. You're to point those people out that are, that are leaders here. They speak into your lives. And you're to say thank you to encourage them too because they didn't encourage. Pastor needs encouragement sometimes. The leadership here needs encouragement. Our leaders aren't even here. You've got to encourage them. They're out of position. And it's up to you guys to get them back in position. Encourage them. Don't try to take the position. Just encourage them. Amen? He says, over you in the, uh, let me read it again. And we urge you, brothers, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Do you guys get that? That's what we're to do. Bobby, the, the leader of the women, you guys should be loving on her. Should be encouraging her. Should be praying with her. When, when, uh, you guys who, who, who are prayers, prayers, you should be here on Tuesdays. Should be praying. You want your life changed? Come pray. Prayer's going to change you. Be part of this church. This is where you fellowship. This is where you get fed. 
This is where you eat. Can I get an amen? This is where it happens. He says right here at the end of it, he says, be at peace among yourselves. It's up to us to choose peace. For you, not them, for you to walk in peace. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, it's up to you to walk in peace. Well, I don't know, my mom, she's kind of grouchy. Well, it's not up to her. You just got to walk in peace, even if she's a grouch. Or if he's a grouch, you still got to be at peace with yourself. First of all, with God, and then yourself, and then you can be at peace with other people. The only reason you don't have peace is because you don't have peace with God. You haven't repented from your doings then you'll have peace I can get along with people I can get along with anybody I'll make a friend at a bus stop I'll have a conversation with someone there you gotta do that there's customers that are coming and I tell them I said well you're a Christian no, huh? one big Dude, about big as you, John, big tall guy, about six four, six foot five, all tatted up and everything, you know, yoked up and everything. I said, you're Cristiano. He says, yeah. I said, I thought you were, little brother. I said, I can sense you. And he says, where do you go to church at? And I told him, he goes, I'm from, and he goes, I'm from Santana. You know, I said, oh, good, okay. right on, very good, you know. And I make light of it, we have fun. And he says, oh, you're a Christian. I said, yeah, we Go right here at Turning Point Fellowship. And I told him, he goes, oh, I know where you exactly where at. Come on by. Come on by and visit us, brother. That's all. I tell you to join my church or nothing. Just come. And that's what we're to do. We're to be the light. Amen? He says, be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you. I encourage you. I want to warn you. I want to build you up. Brothers, warn those who are unruly, right? In 14, what's that word unruly mean? Those people that are uh, rude and they're in uh, sort of bit, and I can't say the word, but that's what they are. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you. That's what they are. Amen. So he says, now we exhort you, brothers, to warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint hearted. There it is. Uphold the weak and be uh, patient with all. How much patience has God shown you? How much grace has he given you? How many mistakes have you blown, you know, and he's still like, let's keep going, mijo. And let's not talk about what we were and who we were. Let's talk about who we are and who we're going to become. In 24, you're about to step into a whole new realm. Let's talk about your plans, your goals. Where are you going? What are you going to do with 24? Is just going to be another year? You go for three months and you're excited, then, okay, here we are. It's March, April. Let's go back to what we were. No. You got to discipline yourself. Martha, you got to be full of joy every single day. Sin ganas or con no ganas, you know what I mean? Con dinero, sin dinero. You know that old song, right? He used to say, yo soy rey, right? That was a prideful song. That was all him. But we got to learn that, you know, with money, without money, right? Jesus is the king, no matter what. Sickness or, uh, or, uh, sickness or health, Jesus is the king. If they don't want to be my friend, Jesus is the king. Amen? No matter what. They're not friendly. Jesus is still king. You know, no matter what goes on in our lives. I want to encourage you guys. As Paul was in, uh, encouraging the theologians, the Thessalonians, sorry, Thessalonians, and you theologians too need some encouragement. Now we exhort you, brother, and warn those who are unruly. Poochy faces. Comfort the faint-hearted. Those who are always talking about their weaknesses and their faults and their shortcomings. Uphold the weak. Those that you know. You shouldn't be taking advantage of weak people. Because you're stronger, you're bigger. You're, it's not the way you do Christianity. I don't do that. 
I don't do that stuff. We're here to build one another, to love one another. You know your hearts, you know. God knows your hearts and you know your heart. I don't know your hearts. Because you're in front of pastor. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm with you, pastor. You know. But at home, I don't know how you act. I don't know how you act at, at, at work. Are you nice to people at work or are you not? Are you nice to your dogs or do you kick them? <laughs> she loves her dogs. <laughs> I love my dogs just in a different way, but I love them. I don't kick my dogs, but I, I'm rough with them, but I love my dogs. If I tell them to get you, they're going to get you. That's how much they love me. <laughs> He says, unruly, uncover, faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil to evil to everyone. And we're fighting and trying to get for a position in our marriages. That's evil to evil. Stop that. Amen? But always pursue, always pursue, always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all, not just for yourself. Yeah, it's good. You got to be good to yourself. You got to feel good about yourself, buddy. Bubby, you got to feel good about yourself. But you got to feel good about other people, too. And not just the basketball game or hits the three-pointer and all that stuff. You know, why not the guy that no one likes or no one hangs around with? Why can't you just go sit with them? I try to do that at the potlucks. I want to sit with the people that I see when I look around that no one's sitting with them. Or I invite them to my table. I say, why don't you come over here and sit with us? That's how we should do it if we're Christians. But if we hang around with the same crew, crew again, I said crew, the same people, what are we winning? Even the Pharisees did that. Amen. Pursue what is good for both and uh, for yourselves and for all. Verse 16. Rejoice always. Rejoice. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God and Jesus for you. That's the will. Do you know? want to know God's will? There it is right there. I don't know God's will. Rejoice always. That's his will. Pray without ceasing. Stop praying. Don't ever stop praying. You can pray wherever you go. Oh, I can only pray at church. No religious person. No. You're free to pray wherever you like to be and want to be. I'm in a big warehouse. I'm praising God and worshiping God all the time. They, I know they hear me. It's not being like, I want to give God a hallelujah. And I'll be like, give him hallelujah, give him hallelujah. <laughs> you got to, amen? He says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God for and everything. Not when, not when just life is good. Don't we say this as Christians? God is good. And all the time? All the time. All the time. God is good. You got to learn how to appreciate that. God is good. Not when it's just going your way. It's good all the time because he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He never changes. God is always good. No matter what we go through, God is still good to me. You got to know that. Amen? This is for Jesus. Then, uh, verse 19. Do not quench the spirit. You quench the spirit, people on fire, and then all of a sudden you, you, you say something to them and you belittle them or, or you act rude to them because they're excited and they're doing things for God. You quench the spirit. Quench God from blessing them and blessing you. They were excited about God. And I'm like, oh, it ain't going to happen very long. It's only going to last for a little bit. I'm telling you, let me tell you. Oh, it's going to happen. You're going to be excited for a week or two or two months, and then all of a sudden, the fire is going to go down. If that's what you expect, that's what you're going to get. For what a man sows, he reaps. But if you say, you know what, I'm going to be excited single, every single day. I'm expecting 
the goodness of God, to follow me all the good days of my life. Amen? Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's what I do. Because I can see uh, King David when he danced and how he operated and how he moved before God. There was no shame to him. He was the king and he loved God more than he loved himself, his position, or anyone else. He, Gloria a Dios, man. Praise be to God. And he's dancing. You got to learn how to dance. You got to learn how to do a little cha-cha without some funk music. <laughs> just some praise music, amen? Something in your heart that you just want to do that. Got to learn to practice in your house, run around. If you don't know how to practice in church, learn how to run around your own house. Go around your backyard and run around and praise God. For when you get here, yeah, I've already done this all kinds of times, so it's not something strange to me. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecy. P -p People don't like the, the, the gifts. Test all things. He says test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain. From, ev from every form of evil. Whatever is evil for us, to stay away from that. Can't do that. The, the young, the, there's a young man there, no, he, he's 55. He ain't a young man, but he's younger than me, so he's a young. He, he just says he has problems with his eyes. He's a cristiano. He goes, uh, I said, don't trip, little brother. I said, God's got a plan. God's got some instruction. Because, you know, the ladies, they sin there to be uh, at the, under the uh, patios that they put up, the little cake caps, what are they called? Yeah, canopies, thank you. Whatever, you know, and they're from other places. You know, they're pretty little girls. And they know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. And she walks in and, you know, she's all cheap flat. She's trying to get everyone's attention and stuff. I jam. When she comes, I say, Phew. I'm going to the back of the warehouse and I'm going to find something to do, you know, you do it. And I, was, I watched him right here from the thing and he's over there like, so I, after she's gone, I said, hermano, why? Why? He goes, you know, you know, you know, brother, the devil, the devil just, you know, he gets a hold on you. And I said, don't let him. I said, use some wisdom, hermano. Learn to walk away. I said, I walk away when they come up. You know, they're having tacos and all that. Angel, you can have some tacos? No, thank you. No. I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to participate in that. I just told him, I said, hermano, what they taught me is to tie your shoes or untie your shoes cuando llegan. You know, because he speaks the last phrase. I said, just go down, untie your shoe on purpose and sit there and just let her go by. I said, because that's what they're paid to do. And the enemy is going to use them. I said, so don't do that. Don't stay away from all form of evil in our thoughts, in our ways. People we hang around with. Can't hang around with those people no more. Because there's a form of evil there that they don't even know. And they're being used. Right? Amen? What did he say? Get behind me, Satan. He wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to the spirit behind him that was making Peter tell him that no one's going to hurt you, Lord. I got you. He says, get behind me because you don't even know my father's will. My father's will is to die for the, for the sins of the world, the sickness of these men. This is my will that God has given me. This is what I have to do. And we have to learn to do that. That's Jesus Christ did that. No one took his life, right? No one took Jesus' life. He gave his life for our sins and for us. Oh, the Romans killed him. Oh, the Pharisees. No. God allowed it because this was God's plan. And we have to understand that. And there's things that are going to happen in our lives, the storms we're going to go into. And we don't, like the, we don't like the storms. We don't like the wind. Those winds are good for you. The storms are good for us because sometimes they put you on a new path toward God. You'll get used to having the, the, the storm's wind blowing at you like, this is nothing. I can stand this. 
I can withstand this because I already went through this before. I know what to do. I know how to do it. I'm going to do it with my praise. I'm going to do it with my worship. I'm going to do it with my hands lifted up. There's a song we sing. Is that this is how uh, this is how we this is how we fight our battles, and this is how we fight our. Every time they're saying that, they go, "This is how we fight our battles." I say, "With our praise, and this is how we fight our uh, our battles. With our worship, this is how I fight my battles. With the word of God, and this is, and I'm throwing word right in between there." this is how we fight our battles, young man. We're not going to give the devil any kind of credit. All the glory belongs to God. He already told him that the Lord is coming. He's already, he says, I ain't even got to write about this to you no more. Now I want to exhort you. Now I want to encourage you. And that's what I want to do with you guys. I want to encourage you. And I was talking to people at the, at the potluck. I was saying, I hope I encourage you guys. I, my heart is to be an encourager. I'm a coach, a coach of life. I'm a preacher. He says, test all things. You got to test all things. If they're righteous or not, if they're evil or if they're good, you got to test it. Hold fast to what is good. Hold on to it, he says. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. Abstain from every, uh, from every form of evil. You have to abstain from it. What happens with us, brothers, that we don't have discipline. You, you were a boxer. You know, it took discipline, right, to get where you were at. It takes discipline to be the person you are, Ted. If not, you're going to be sloppy agape. Can't do that. We got to be disciplined. Verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. May he put that aside for you, for your glory, for your honor, that he builds you up in Christ Jesus. You completely, you complete, that your whole spirit, soul, and body, there it is. Be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You got to start doing it right now. You think you're going to do it a, a day before? You, you don't know. The Bible says we don't know when he's coming. Like a thief in the night. So you got to be preparing yourself now. You got to discipline yourself now by reading your word, by praying and worshiping God and sharing the gospel with people. Verse 24. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. He's faithful. He's going to do it if you allow him to do it. Do you want your life change? Do you want to be a different person? I know some of you guys are tired. You're tired because we, uh, we go against what God says. We're right here, we're blessed, and we're, we're going forward in the things of God. Then all of a sudden, a comadre or uh, someone gets in that's a gossip, a gossip, someone who always contrary, always negative, and then you guys start going along with that. You got to stop that. We got to stop that in Jesus' name. You may learn, you got to learn how to take control of your thoughts, of your imagination of your emotions. Some of you, your emotions run you. They run you raggedy. And you got to stop that. The greater one lives in you. Greater is he that's in me than he of this world. Verse 25, brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers who are with a holy kiss. A kiss on the, on the cheek. A holy one. Not one that's uh, lying and cheat like what Judas did. Amen? Then he says right here in verse 27, closing, I, I charge you, I challenge you by the Lord that this epistle, this by this letter I wrote, he says, be read to all the holy brethren. 
to the holy brothers, the brothers who are set apart for God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Got four minutes right here. Perfect. We must understand that godly living includes work that flows from faith. That's how living, uh, uh, godly living flows through the faith that we have in God. The labor that we have for the ministry and for the people of God, it comes from the love of God. And the love of God is going to give us patience, right? Aren't these the, the fruits of the spirit we're talking about right here? He's going to give you patience. He's going to give you endurance to flow from the living hope, from what you're expecting from God. What are you expecting from God? I want God to change my life. I want to be a better father, a better brother, a better pastor. I want to, to hug you and love you honestly. That we love one another. We bless one another. Not no fake. If you tell me you love me, I pray that you mean it. If you hug me, I, I hope it's not a fake hug. I hope you're really sincere with that love. That's what we're supposed to be living, how we're living. And it flows through our faith and through our love and our patience and, and, and stirring. Right here, uh, our exhortation. Understand that each of these exhortations he's talking about right here, the ones we talked about, it's a command. It's an alternative order. God is telling us what to do and how to do it and when to do it and why to do it. He tells us. Therefore, we have to diligently seek God and apply each truth that you know as a truth. I have some truths that I know that are God's and I have to apply those truths to my life. If not, then I'm going to be a hypocrite. I'm going to be an actor going to be a fake. We're not to do that. Amen? So we're commanded to apply every promise, every truth into our lives. And this is how we grow in godliness. This is how we grow in God. Amen? Godly living is, a char is characterized by a life that we live to please God. That's how they'll know you, by your character, by your fruit, that you're one that tries to please God. And that's what you should be doing. We should be trying to please God and not each other or anyone else. You got to learn to please God before you please your wife and vice versa. Every one of us. And that's going to enrich your marriage so much when you do that. Your friendship. With the brothers and sisters here. So much wisdom, Martha, you have. So much wisdom. The church needs you. They need it here. But you got to apply it here. This is your house, right? Where you worship. This is what we have to do. This is where I put my effort, my ministry. This is my ministry. I'm not talking about being a pastor. But my ministry as a man. As a lover of God. This is our ministry as brothers and sisters. We're going to have a ministry of helps uh, uh, party, I call it, you know, December 17th. We should be loving each other. I want everyone dressed up nice, too. Don't wear your Levi's and your T-shirt. I'm not going to let you in. Yeah. Dress nice. Don't wear a tie and a shirt or a nice business shirt, you know. And don't tell me, oh, I, I, I got that. Pastor, you can't make us uh, dress the way you want to. I'm going to hear all that. No, 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 no. If we're with each other, let's be with each other. If you're a Raider fan, you're not going to be wearing a Ram thing at a, at, at a Raider game, right? Amen? You're not. You're going to dress in what you dress in. You know, that's how people do it. We, we're going to dress nice. That's what I'm asking. We're going to be taking pictures. You want to look nice. Could be your last year of 23, taking pictures. 
It's through Jesus' sacrifice that we've already found favor with God in His sight. Favor already belongs to you. And therefore, we have to live. We have to live this life that reflects the favor of God upon our lives. Your life should be full of uh, favor that people see your favor. They taste your favor. I'm not talking about money, cars, or anything like that, because I know how we were taught. It ain't about that. The favor of God's character upon your life, the holiness, the righteousness, the joy, the peace. Some of you have been Christians for 15, 5, 10, 15 years and have no peace. No peace in your life. Don't even know how to storm, uh, uh, calm a storm. Don't even know how to do it. You let it just go on and on. Peace! Be still. That's what Jesus said. And everything just became calm. The sea, the sea calmed down. The winds stopped. The waves started going. Stopped. Because he said, stop. Peace! Be still. Same thing for us. When the storms are going in our lives, you've got to learn to say, peace. Be still. Your mind. When it's just going crazy, peace, be still to your mind. Peace, be still to your mouth, to your ears. Learn to walk in peace of God. You guys are quiet or you guys are hungry or sleepy, one of them. We're to behave that when unbelievers see our lives, this is from my, my job. They will recognize the honor of God that we, that we walk in. And we'll know that our source is from God. That's how people should see you. And that's my goal. That's what I asked God when I went back to this to work. That people would see the honor of God, the glory of God in my life. Not that I have raised my hands and do this. They just see your, 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 your uh, friendliness, your love. My boss yesterday just gave me a compliment. He says, Angel, you're doing real well. He says, what I like is that you you're, uh, go after things. Is the word he started with an I. In incentive. The yeah, initiative. Thank you. Exactly what he said. I like your initiative. He's in, I know that you're not a, a computer guy. Because I figured all that out. And I said, praise God, I understand. He says, but you keep trying. He says, and I see you get frustrated. Because the guy was teaching me, and I, you know, he's trying to teach me how to do this thing. And, he, and he's, you know, I can see, hear him frustrated. I can feel him frustrated. And I can't, I can't do it. I said, you know what, brother? I, I did this. I said, you know what? You do it, bro. And he goes, what? I said, do it. I said, just do it. And I just stood there and. Like that. And he, What's wrong? I said, I can't do it, brother. I go, right now, I can't do that. And I was mad. I just put my hands on my hips. I said, brother, just do it, bro. I said, because I'll beat myself up more than anybody in this room. I said, but I can't do that right now, you know? And he goes, I got you, Angel. I got you. I said, right on. He did it. And, you know, he goes, you all right? I said, I'm all right. I said, I was just weak in that moment. And I want you to know that, you know? I said, I'm not, I'm not the sharpest guy on the, on the pencil of the box, but I am not. I said, but I'm going to give you the best effort I got. And that's what we're to do as Christians. No matter what goes on, we know our weaknesses. No one has to tell you your weakness, you know. And that's what you got to sharpen. Mine is that computer. But I told him, I said, you give me six months to a year, brother. I said, he goes, I know. He told me, he goes, you're going to be my number one salesman. He goes, I know you are. I said, praise God. Yeah. But right now, I'm, he showed me the numbers. You know, I think they bring out numbers, right? I was like, I, <laughs> I was like about five from the bottom, you know. Like my first month, I made like $16,000. He goes, you did good. I'm like. I said, brother, I used to sell over, I didn't tell him that in my head. I go, I used to sell over a million dollars worth of product. 
but I'm not there. And I'm not that same man no more either. I recognize that. But through Christ, I can do all things. You know, and the guy that's number one there is like, look at me. I'm in the top 25. You know, he's saying, I'm like, very good, brother. I said, we're going to be doing good next to each other, brother, you know. But in Christ, bring it back to Christ. Our competition ain't for one another. It's to eliminate God. To be light for God that people would see all the light in you. And if they say something about Ted, me, I, you know, man, he's a great man. He's an awesome man. He's, man, that brother got Jesus. Well, you should see him at home. The way he acts at home. No! You're throwing, you're, quench, you're quenching the spirit. That's right, amen. Because you, we're people of faith, right? Are we speaking by faith or not? And Rana Josie, right? Don't we live by faith and not by sight? You got that right. Yeah, that's my man. That's my man, by faith, in Jesus' name. You ain't got to say all that out loud, you know, by faith, you know. Alex is, you know, finally got there. No. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Exactly. Thank God he's there. You know, all of us are there where God wants us. Are there more to come? Yes, there's more to come, yeah. A lot more to come. Imagine when you're like 20. Three, 25 years old, people can see the glory of God. Look at that young lady. Way different from you, Emotis. Way different. You see, like it is, huh? Way better. And that's how we're to be. Ivan, you know, build him up. Encourage that little brother. Even if he goes 0 and 10, you know, you're still a winner, brother. You finished. You finished your race. Next summer, we're going to kick some butt. You know, and if we got to put put them in a summer uh, league of wrestling, you pay the little extra money. Two hundred fifty we used to pay for Lucas, you know, for a six week little thing, you know, where he can run, learn how to take off real faster, and things like that, you know. And you had to sacrifice. I had to wake up Saturday. I want to be at home, and his coach at eight o'clock, you know, out of Mission Viejo. I'm like, oh my god. So you got to get up at 6 o'clock, you know, to get, to get them there over there. You got to do that. You got to be a living sacrifice. You got to give an effort. You got to walk in peace. Don't worry about it. You know. I make, I make light of all that stuff. It goes right off of me. It's, I ain't going to trip on that, you know, carry that for the rest of the week. You ain't got that much power. <laughs> I ain't going to allow you to have that much power over me. No way. <laughs> no way I would allow you to have that much power. You ain't that strong, you know. Hey, well, let's all stand to our feet. So we'll start uh, the Salonians uh, 2 yeah, Second Thessalonians 2 uh, next week. Amen. And I'm going to let you guys preach it. I'm going to let you guys teach it. I'll give you the five, six ones, and I want you to break that down. I know you can break it down. I heard you yesterday at dinner. I heard you, and then you were telling like, oh, you're thinking about that. I'm thinking about Jesus. I'm like, oh, this brother can write. Amen. So he can write a, a sermon. Amen. You ready? Got to be ready, Ed. You ready, Ed? Amen. Sat under this word for a while. It's time to rock and roll, right? The much ready to bounce back or what? Come on, amen. You ready to preach the gospel? Yes, amen. You ready, Josie? It's time to step up now. Amen. Got to be ready in season, out of season. You know, Bobby's going to be retiring here pretty soon, and we're going to need a leader. Right, Bobby? Oh, you're not, I thought you were retiring. You and... You're not what? 
Oh, wow. Okay, there it is. Praise her. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> but we're going to let these young ladies preach. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna, you guys have a lady. You guys have a word. You have a word. You have a word. You have a word, don't you? Because if you talk to somebody, you're preaching to people, right? You're ministering, right? At work, you minister. You minister, right? Do you? You minister, aren't you talking to you got a word. Usted trae una palabra, ¿verdad, hermana? De Dios, ¿verdad? Amen. Martha, I know you got a word, right? I know Alejandra has a, you know, Adriana has a word, right? Teresa, you have a word, right? We're ready. We ain't going to share our shells. We're going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I don't know who's going to come up. That's how I find out who comes through the cream. The cream comes to the top. That's what Pastor Art told me. We're going to see what you got, Angel. He had about 15 guys that were under him, and he said, we're going to see who comes to the top. The cream will rise to the top. In Jesus' name, that's what's going to take place here. I'm not, I told Ryan, I said, we're not taking anybody and everybody, brother, no more. Whoever's going to usher, they're going to usher in excellence. They're going to be solid. If they're not, I told them, I, I don't want them ushering. They're going to be teachers they're going to flake, we just leave the kids inside. That's all. You know, I need solid people. Yeah. We need solid, if there's just 20 of us, we need solid people. That's what we need. I don't need 100 guys, a bunch of 100 flakes, 50 or flakes, and, you know, no way. Amen? Yeah. I know I got to wake up early too, you know, 5.15 in the morning. Hallelujah. Father, I love you. I bless you. I honor you, Lord. I thank you for the word that is coming out, Father, has come out, that it would not return void, Father, but it accomplish all that you purpose to do in the lives of your people that would bring you good pleasure, Lord, as they study the word, as they meditate upon the word, as they pray the word, Lord God, that it would bring you good pleasure and it would increase them in godliness, Lord. Fill, fill us, Lord, until we overflow with the character of of who you are with the love and the peace, the joy, with the truth, with the strength, Lord, of your word. Fill us, Lord, for we want more of you and less of us, Lord. Remove us, Father, the pride, the selfishness, the self-centeredness, Lord God. Remind us of who we are in you, Lord that we would not lose sight of who you are and who we are in you, Lord God. Speak to us. We want to know you, Father, even more and more. Thank you for the hunger. Thank you for the fire in their bellies, Lord. The hunger to partake of your flesh, Lord God. The thirst, Father, to drink of your blood, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you would bless us and bless our children, the youth next door. Every minister that is here tonight, Lord, I pray that they would not grow weary and, Father, well-doing, that in due season they will reap what they have sown. And I pray for those, Father, right here that have a calling upon their lives to, to teach, to minister, Lord God, not behind this pulpit, Father, but behind these children and the youth, Lord, behind their brothers and sisters, that they be the one that lift them up and hold them up by their waist or by their arms, Lord. I pray this right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for the favor I thank you for the goodness and the mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. I thank you for the knowledge of your word, Lord. I thank you for the understanding of your word, for the justice of your word, for your word is just, Lord. It's just, Lord. It doesn't take sides. Your word is you and you are your word. I pray right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for the drive home to no accidents, no breakdowns. 
No flat tires, Father, not even a ticket, just a safe passage to and from this place. I pray that when we lay down tonight, Father, we'll rest. Our minds will rest, our emotions will rest, our souls will rest, our wills will rest, our bodies will rest. And we'll wake up tomorrow, Father, rejuvenated, feeling the power and the glory of God within our hearts. I pray and I thank you and I bless you right now. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're dismissed. Praise God. Shake somebody's hand, hug on somebody.